Okay, uh, continuing our jQuery tutorials, we're actually just going to be adding on to our last tutorial where we learned how to fade elements in and out. Let's uh, quickly review. So here's uh, our web page as it starts off. Uh, looking at the code over here on the left, you can see that right now we're looking at the uh, div tag of my two ID, and it says a paragraph tag in it. It says click me, which is right there. And uh, we have two other elements, but uh, you can see that our two other div, div tags that you can see that we have a CSS style that displays none, which means they're hidden by default, uh, and they contain some text. Uh, if we go up here to our scripts, we have our jQuery library uh, running there. Uh, then we have our script right here. Our script is calling functions from the uh, jQuery script, and uh, we have our dollar sign in parentheses here. Anytime you see that with jQuery, that means we're looking at an element. In this case, we're looking at the element of our document, which is our web page. Uh, and we're going to say whenever it's ready. So we're making sure that the page is loaded and done loading before we start doing stuff. Next, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to run a function once it is ready. That function looks at uh, all elements with a div tag ID. So you can see the pound symbol here, meaning that we're looking at for a div tag with an ID of, and in this case, my2, which is our visible uh, element here. And any time that that is clicked, we're going to run another function. That function is going to do three things. It's going to find uh, the element uh, with the div tag ID of my1, the div tag element of my3, and it's going to find this, which is the element that was clicked. We could also put pound my2 in there uh, inside quotations, but uh, it's always a good idea if you're working with the element that's clicked to use this, because that way if you change things later on, you don't have to change that. The first two elements are already invisible. What we're going to do is we're going to fade them in, and uh, we're going to fade them in at different rates. Here, this one's taking three seconds. This one's taking five seconds, and this one is uh, going to fade out because it's already visible at three seconds. So when we click this, this click me will slowly fade out over three seconds, and the other two will fade in, one at three seconds, the other one at five. Fading in, fading in, fading out. Okay, um, so what we're going to look at today is uh, what I'm going to do is instead of making these uh, well, I guess we can start with them invisible. I was going to have them uh, fade. Yeah, let's start with them. I don't, don't change what I was planning on doing because I'll screw something up. Let's see. We'll make them both visible to start off. So now our page starts with those elements. So obviously clicking this uh, just makes that fade out because these ones are already visible. So let's change what that does. Instead of fading in, what we're going to do here is we're going to fade two. Now this is case sensitive, so fade two with a capital T, just like fade in had a capital I and fade out had a capital O. And um, we can give it the same thing here with the number of uh, uh, thousands of a second that we want a delay of. And then we can give it an amount that we want it to fade to. So let's uh, say here we'll say 0 0.5 and this one will say uh, 0, uh, 0 0.5 2. So now, if we refresh over here and we click this, there, you notice that that element faded out, just as it said. So the element we clicked is fading out over three seconds. The other two faded to a certain fade. Uh, so uh, I believe it's, it's from 0 to 1, 1 being fully visible. So the lower the number, uh, the more faded out it is. So if you want something to be faded out uh, to a certain point, so it's kind of maybe uh, something else is becoming the prominent thing on the page, and you want everything else to kind of fade away, still be visible, but know that it's not the active element, well, you would just use the Fade To option here. Give it the uh, speed that you want to fade to, so in seconds, or thousands of a second here, or just like before, we can say something like slow, uh, and so that will make that a little bit faster because five seconds was, was very slow. So you can see how fast that faded to its 0.2 uh, visibility. This faded away completely, and this one is at about 50% or 0.5 of its uh, visibility. Uh, and of course, 
this is true with anything within those elements. You should be able to fade out um, anything. Yeah, right now we're just working with text. We're going to get into more visual stuff in the near future. So this was kind of a short tutorial, just kind of a review and add-on to our last tutorial on fading. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's uh, try something. I'm going to try something that I just thought of. Uh, just like before, we're going to add a style. So this is uh, some CSS that we're putting right into our, uh, our div tag here. We're going to say display none. So now when we refresh this, that first element was completely invisible. I'm going to click it and see what happens. Okay, I wasn't 100% sure. It does then make it visible and then fades it into uh, whatever uh, percentage we give it. So here we're saying 50% or 0.5. Um, so you can definitely have things fade in and if you don't want them to fade in all the way, well, there you go. Uh, I thank you for watching, and uh, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. If you're enjoying these tutorials, please let me know. You know, comment below, give me thumbs up. Uh, you know, like this video, subscribe so you don't miss more of my videos. Um, and this is just kind of a build up. Uh, you know, uh, web pages are very easy to make universal. Uh, you know, any good programming languages, C, C++, Python. Perl. These are all languages. They're good languages because they will run on any operating system unless the operating system really restricts it, uh, which some operating systems do. Um, but they should run on pretty much anything. But sometimes you have to do little workarounds or compile stuff. Uh, HTML and JavaScript makes it very easy if people are using a modern browser uh, to make simple applications. And that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be making web applications that you could package into an actual desktop or device application, such as for your Linux or Windows or uh, I guess even Mac desktop, um, or for something like an Android device. Uh, I'm not going to be going over iPhone stuff because of the issues with that, but um, we are going to down the line make a web app and very make a very simple Android application that displays our web app that can be embedded into the app or be called from a website. So that's where we're going with this. So definitely if that's something you're interested in, uh, give a thumbs up and let me know below. Thank you for watching. Uh, once again, visit filmsbychris.com. Be sure to check out this entire playlist. Hopefully there's an annotation or uh, a link in the description. And uh, I just hope that you have a great day.